From the point of view of the jury, uh, this, this was a most intriguing uh, submission because it, it is so sort of multidimensional and so uh, potentially far-reaching. And uh, you know, many, many questions come to mind. Uh, we'll probably spend the rest of the day just uh, delving into the, uh, the, the detail of how this works. But um, you know, here we have something which, as, as you say, uh, a factor which has uh, historically brought down great civilizations. I think that's uh, the, the way you put it. And uh, that those previous civilizations have not managed to solve this very simple problem of uh, animals on, on rangeland and uh, the, the resulting diversification, desertification, I suppose as the human populations rose in those cases, uh, eventually brought down those civilizations. And, and I think what's intriguing is that uh, Although we think we have all sorts of other problems, as you say, global warming and so on, quite possibly at root, uh, it's this same problem again, which is uh, uh, you know, afflicting us. So uh, the possibility, we felt that here there was a solution to that, uh, not strangely one that too many people seem to have heard of, uh, which is a slight mystery in itself, uh, was, uh, you know, we hope we've done something about that now, we'll be rewarded with the prize, of course. Um, you know, this was really very deeply significant, and, um, and one of the things that intrigues me is the, you, you, you mentioned uh, global warming, and we, we uh, normally are thinking about that as caused by greenhouse gases and methane and so on, but if I understood you correctly, uh, you are saying that in a sense it's, it's the alteration of the land, the landscape, which is changing the microclimate, which may have uh, you know, as, as, as important effects as just our concern about CO2. Is, is that, do I, do I have that right? No. Well, yes, what I'm saying in essence is there are three legs to the same stool. Biodiversity loss, which leads to desertification. Without biodiversity loss, there is no desertification. And then desertification, which ultimately leads to climate change. And then it was accelerated by fossil fuels. But if we stop all the fossil fuel pollutants next year, by some miracle, you'd still have the desertification of the world continuing, and you wouldn't have solved the problem. So we have to solve them together as one entity. Well, I think somewhere in the materials you submitted, you, you gave some comparisons of the amount of carbon saving that would be achieved uh, by this method. I think there was, I can't remember the numbers now, but uh, the carbon emissions through fire in, in Africa compared to the approach that you have. Yes, the, the, not only have we got to stop, reverse the desertification, but we have to stop the annual burning of grasslands. Everybody's talking about the burning of forests, but forests burn once in 20 years or whatever. Grasslands burn every year, whether they be in Kentucky or Africa. In Africa alone, we're burning over 2 billion acres every year. It's an enormous contribution. Uh, to climate change, and the only reason people are burning is because there aren't enough herbivores to keep the grassland alive. There aren't enough animals to keep it alive. Which is ironic, since we, we have all been told that the uh, vast numbers of animals are exactly the problem. I think that was, you know, that, the, the intriguing aspect of this, that the solution actually was, you know, the, the exact reversal of what is thought to be the problem, I and mean, that, that is most intriguing. But of course that, that point, that it's not just Africa we're talking about, this is applicable in other parts of the world as well. And do, you, do you have projects underway in other parts of the oh, world? Oh yes, uh, we've got, uh, when I say we, people working with us, who have trained with us or whatever, have got well, way over 30 million acres worldwide under this management tory. Yeah. So it's, 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 uh, it's out there. Now another aspect of this, which um, uh, you haven't said that much about, which intrigues me in particular, is this whole notion of the holistic goal. Uh, and you call this the holistic resource management system. Uh, do you, is that, I mean obviously the direct application of that is in the rangeland management that you described, but do you think that that actually uh, has, holds the seeds of a more general uh, management approach that, that yeah, can be applied elsewhere? Absolutely. What we found, and I wanted to get out of lecture mode, <laughs> what, what we found is, is, is that, that what is causing almost every problem that humanity faces is the way all humans make decisions. Uh, we in this room think we make decisions in thousands of different ways. No, what we discovered was we all make decisions exactly the same way. And there was a flaw in that software. And you correct that flaw and everything starts to come we behave differently in our private lives, our families, our communities, everywhere. Holistic management can be uh, applied by 
a single person working in a petrol station in, in a city. We've realized it's, it's, it's everywhere. But that wasn't through any cleverness on my part. When we set out to put a person on the moon, we didn't plan smaller transistors, radios, computers. They were spin-offs. When I set out to solve the riddle of desertification, I didn't know where it would lead. And then we discovered we'd hit on something far more profound. So we can use it at government levels, policy levels, project levels, all levels. And we are doing so. And you described using it when you were in the government for making environmental uh, well, decisions. I didn't, but I've written a paper on governance. When I, when I headed the Rhodesia Party in my country, as I did, I, I didn't know how to govern well. But I wouldn't dream of being in government without this framework. I wouldn't dream of it. And yet it's not uh, particularly widely known in, in government. So. It's widely known. It's been fought and resisted. Whole governments have tried to crush this thinking. I was banned from even setting foot on any campus of any university in Southern Africa for over 20 years. People know about it. Can you share it with them? Well, I can't in this format, but you just talk to us later. We can give you all the information you want. The holistic management framework. Uh, that is the, that's what you're asking about. Yes, yes. I mean, I think that's the intriguing thing. So you say it's, it's well known, but uh, I'm not sure it's too many of us have heard about it. <laughs> it's been too vigorously, too yeah. successfully resisted in the corridors of power. <laughs> well, I put it this way: the professions that were dealing with land, like range science and so on, they have fiercely resisted this. And that's not a criticism of any individuals. All humans behave like this and are threatened by new knowledge. So, so people have condemned this work for year after year after year and tried to prove it wrong and so on. So we've gone through a long term, I think Bucky would have been familiar with that, I'm sure, of being regarded as a crank, but finally, is it a way of taking the essence of this holistic management beyond the rangeland application and actually taking it into... Uh, we, can do it, we can do it just as fast as people open their minds to new thinking. Literally, I'm not exaggerating here, we put 2,000 professional people in this country through training in the Carter administration days. We put 2,000 of them. With a week of training in this framework, this holistic framework, they made a statement, it's the most profound in our textbook, where they said, we now recognize that unsound resource management is universal in the United States. If professional people can do that after one week's training, we can get moving, we can scale up as fast as people open their minds to new thinking. That's all that's holding us back. Well, um, I guess on behalf of the whole, uh, well, all the Buckner Fuller Institute, uh, you know, that, that is our hope that um, you know, these ideas will in fact now, now spread much more widely and will have that kind of impact. So thank you very much. Well, thank you for your